Jack Peterson signed with the Diamondbacks. Hector Neris, Neris, however you want to say his name, signed with the Cubs. And the Royals picked up a second baseman, which I did not see coming. And once again, it clarifies that the Royals are actually a contender for the AL Central. Let's get into it. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Touching Bases podcast, where in the last few days, there's been a lot of signings, and I figured we'd just clump it all together. But we'll start off with Jock Peterson. Now, he signed a one-year, $9.5 million contract with a mutual option in 2025. Jock Peterson is 31 years old, and he played for the Dodgers, the Cubs, the Giants, and the Braves. So he's bounced around quite a bit, but has hit 186 career home runs, and he seems to be still healthy and strong and going at it, no matter where he bounces around in definitely a very good addition to to the Diamondbacks offense who made it to the World Series last year this is just going to add to it a little bit more last season he put up a 255 batting average with 15 home runs so pretty average but still a good power bat to add to the lineup especially at Chase Field this season I'm looking forward to it obviously Diamondbacks fans is a good pickup so you know get on you Diamondbacks I appreciate you and Diamondbacks have been active on the free agent market I mean they picked up Erod for 80 million dollars for a four-year contract and also re-signed uh Guriel Jr., which was a huge asset as far as them in the postseason and during the regular season, to a $42 million contract. So the D-backs, they're spending money, man. They went to the World Series, and they're just like, we're going to go back and win it. Tough loss to Texas, but Texas was just blowing everybody out of the water in the postseason. They were red hot and doing what they needed to do, but this is this is definitely showing that they're a major contender, and they're probably going to end up going back to the World Series if they can knock out the Dodgers again. As you know... Dodgers are much better this year than they were last year. Arizona also acquired from the Mariners, sadly, Mr. Suarez, who was uh, struggling with strikeouts last season, but the year before he was a major asset to the Mariners. And seeing if he does perform well with the Diamondbacks this season, and he brings back that 2022 season, then you're talking about a major increase and in production to that third base corner after, since Evan Langoria is no longer with the Diamondbacks, who was pretty big upset in the postseason and probably played a factor in the reason why they weren't able to pull off a World Series victory. The Diamondbacks are better, no question, this year, and now they have Jock Peterson. Moving on to Hector Neris, Neris, however you want to say it, he signed a contract with the Cubs. He's no longer with the Astros, which is fine by me. I was tired to seeing his ugly mug playing against the Mariners and talking shit on the mound because he is annoying. He signed a one-year, $9 million agreement with the Cubs, so just one year, one season. Um, guess you're going to see if it works out for the Cubs to go all in with some pitching a little bit. Um, probably a good fit for him. I know Chicago will enjoy him. Uh, I didn't. I, I honestly can't stand this guy. He just it's t talks too much shit, and he's just too much of a, of a loud mouth on that mound. Yeah, he puts up pretty decent numbers, I guess. But, I mean, over the past seven years, he's he's pitched 68 and, then, and a third's inning per season pretty much as an average. And, you know, a 3.14 ERA is not too bad. But as a setup pitcher or closer, I don't know, whatever. It's 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 all right. He's, he's, he's racked up 89 saves, averaging 11.2 uh, per nine innings, averaging about 11.2 strikeouts per nine innings throughout his career. So... You know, he's got the stuff. He he is a good pitcher in his performance, but honestly, I just don't respect the guy. I think he's kind of just a piece of shit. As a Mariners fan, you guys would understand. Sorry, I guess. Um, I, I really have no sympathy for that team. I think the Astros have a really good performance team and everything, but that organization is a is is a fake organization that needs to need some real gutting. Now the Cubs still lost Cody Bellinger. I don't know if they're going to bring him back. It would make sense for them to bring him back because nobody's picking him up. Clearly he had one good season in the last four. Why would you justify spending 300000 for that? I mean, I know the market's slim, but clearly no team is falling for that. So why not just go back to where you played the best and that would be with the Cubs. So it's just one more piece for the Cubs to add on since they added Im Imanaga for their starting rotation. Um, it's looking pretty good for them at this point. This is a nice uh, bullpen addition as far as their performance if he can hold it out he's getting in the later of his years um you know who knows maybe this will start a little bit more controversy because he is a very big loud mouth on on the mound and likes to likes to start shit with teams when nobody provokes him in the first place so i mean good for chicago uh, i think the fans will love it i think that he'll perform well he's he's got the numbers
numbers and I don't see why uh, why this is not in the right direction for them especially with a one-year deal and very much affordable for them to go back out and pick up Bellinger for a cheaper price because nobody's offered him what he wants and and at the same time also look into a free agency and add a couple more bats or a couple more arms it's it's gonna go be good for them I think lastly I want to touch on the Royals they picked up Adam Frazier for a one-year deal at 4.5 million dollar contract now Adam Frazier has been around to a lot of different teams recently and he has kind of performed at least with the Mariners he was pretty much a bust but the Orioles he seemed to do pretty well I mean he hit 240 with a career high of 13 home runs and 60 RBIs and out of 141 games so he played most of the season and he put numbers up on the board for them so seeing the Royals constantly adding to their roster in small bits this is a big pickup for their second base and I think defensively he's relatively well-rounded I wouldn't say he's crazy solid but he's not committing a ton of errors he's He's got some decent range, and he's got a good bat uh, coming off of a great season with a great bat. So maybe he's found his zone, and I'm hoping in Kansas City he'll be able to prove it. So, AL Central, be ready. The Royals are coming to play. They have a pitching staff. They now have a pretty solid infield. If Bobby Wood Jr. can break that case and be a star-studded player this next season, the Royals have definitely a playoff opportunity. So this was short and sweet. I just wanted to get this information out to you guys. You probably already know much about it, but this is my take. Sorry, Astros fan. I just don't like your team and your organization. Nothing against the fan base or anything. Hector Neris can go suck it. If you haven't already, subscribe or dislike the video if you're an Astros fan and leave a comment down below why you're so angry. See you guys on the next one. Later.